What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little passes at this is a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, your horror safe haven. I'm Chelsea. And I'm James, and we're married and we like to get scared together. Yeah, if you're watching the video version of this, you'll notice we're not in our normal studio. It's a weird place. We went on a little field trip this week. <laughs> uh, we're <laughs> joined by our friend Howie Mandel. Hi. Hi. I'm a fan. Y- you're a I'm fan. A, I'm a Dead Meat fan and I'm a horror fan. Hell yeah. And you love frogs. Damn, yeah. I love Damn, frogs. I love frogs. That's, I'm a dilf. Exactly. A, yeah. yeah. Damn, I love frogs. <laughs> That's also a horror movie. It is. We, I was going to bring it up. Frogs, the horror oh, movie. Oh, Frogs yeah. is so good. I yeah, love we it. love Frogs. Yes, that's yeah, very young Sam Elliott, mm-hmm. uh, pre mustache. I think I Sam love Elliott. that I could yeah. bring up anything horror and you guys <laughs> have the reference. You're like, we, we at least know of it, even if we haven't seen it. But sure, we have yeah. watched Frogs. We've we did an it. episode on Frogs yeah. specifically. And I wasn't in it. So I, I'm wearing oh the t shirt many episodes too late. Yeah, I'm we got to right. redo the episode now. Yeah. As part of our creature feature summer, we did a whole bunch of. Uh, yeah, creature movies. So we did The Bees, which is a great one. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think of like eight legged freaks, eight legged freaks, Lake Placid, yep. like all those critter movies. Yeah. I mean, not critters. Well, but, not, yeah. but not the movie critters. <laughs> yeah, not the movie right. Critters. Yeah. So this episode is Jews. Yeah. <laughs> 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 gremlins. Well, uh, I just monsters. covered Gremlins on the kill count, and people were like, that's not a horror movie. And I was like, I think it is. Yeah, it, it's, is. it straddles it. It is. You know, I was trying to, I do my podcast, mm-hmm. which you guys did. Yeah. And I can't thank you enough for doing it. You were great on it. It was and everybody, so fun. And everybody said that you were amazing on it. And the, the, I think there is, whether you go to horror movies or not, or watch them, I think everybody's intrigued by them. And um, I was just saying that I wanted to, uh, so I do my podcast with my daughter, mm-hmm. Jacqueline Schultz. And her daughter is eight years old, and I wanted to show her uh, Gizmo the other day, or Gremlins. Yeah. And she said, no, it's too scary for her. Hmm, for eight? I mean, you know, it's a kid-by-kid basis. I, think I was at that terrified point. of Gremlins as a kid. Yeah. You yes. were? Yes. Not of Gizmo, though. Not no. of Gizmo. Well, honestly, maybe a little, because he had the potential to, like, be scary. I know you he never he, is. You thought he turned into Stripe, as right? As a kid, Which was an original I misunderstood idea. and thought that he turned into the bad Gremlins. Yeah. No, it just blows out of his back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's why if you feed... His- it- well, it's just right. Is that what happened? Like, if you, yeah, yeah, if you like, wet balls. me, yeah. Well, maybe people don't know, but I was Gizmo. Yes. I was yes. the voice of Gizmo. I'm the sound of. Yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> the, the cutest little guy. Yeah, he is adorable, but he is. He, but mayhem. Got, you know, after midnight, if you get him wet mm-hmm. or light bright, light bright, <laughs> light, light bright, light bright. Mm-hmm. If you if you if he gets into the light. Then you're, you're trouble. It's bad. Mayhem yes. in, ensues. Are yeah. all of the other gremlins technically his kids? Right? We were having this debate. Right. Right. Offspring of some sort. Yeah. I never even thought of it that way. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. He's mm-hmm. like Octomom, but furry and cute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's or the right. second one, he's like Octo Hundred yeah. Mom. There's so yeah. many. There's a lot. Yeah. I was, but Frank Welker was the voice of Stripe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they also allowed me to do the voice of a lot of, like in the in the big crowd scene. So I did, if you listen really closely, I think it's in the bar scene. I go, let it be, 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 but I got to make a lot of noises. That's so much fun. It's it's so weird. Like horror characters where they are performed by voice actors. I'm thinking of Chucky and, and Brad Dourif. Mm-hmm. When we interviewed him, we kind of talked about how there's almost this disconnect that he felt between like himself and then the rest of like the cast and the movie itself because he's not there for it technically. Do you kind of feel the same with Gremlins where it's like Well, yeah, yes, cuz you I'm came in after it, it was done. No, but after the it first was one. done, but and and Joe uh, no, I do I don't feel a disconnect. Yeah. No, I'll tell you why right. because Joe Dante um, the director was very, very, as he should be as a director, uh, very involved. He was mm-hmm. in the room. And in and I mean in the recording um studio and so were all the voices of the other gremlins so when we did scenes it wasn't i wasn't you know sometimes with voice acting you're isolated in a little booth by yourself Mm -hmm. and i felt like you know if if i was in a scene with stripe or anybody else it it was uh, 
I, I felt like I was there and we would watch it on the screen. And even though he had in mind what, what he was saying, because he was talking, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, even though it sounded like, like, uh, you know, light bright, light bright, light bright. I'm not saying light bright, but I'm giving that intonation. Like he, he, that's what the problem might've been. You know, we could also improvise and it was fun to like talk and say, oh, what if he did this or what if he did that or what if he was uh, at first he didn't realize what was going on and then he got scared in this moment, you know, and so we got to be a big part of. I think we got to be a big part of some of the storytelling. And mm-hmm. when you get to be a big part of the storytelling or the emotion of the character, because I think a big part of the emotion came from the sound. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I learned that even more importantly, after we finished recording all the gizmo sounds, this is what was really interesting to me. Every country that it got released in they would have me come in and redo it. Now I wasn't speaking English, Mm -hmm. but there is an English there. You understand when he's going light, bright, light, bright, Mm -hmm. light, bright, kind of, you know, so you understand that's what, so then when they were going to release it in Germany, because I don't have that guttural sound that that she would give me, uh, there'd be a voice coach or an, an, um, so he went, <laughs> you know, so it's more of a. So that sounded yeah. like the 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 people who were watching the movie could relate to Gizmo in that way. Oh, or if so it was cool. in all the Asian communities, you know, they would make it. The, I don't know. I can't remember what the sounds were, but he was more. <laughs> you know, like what, whatever it was, yeah. sounded more Asian, so that it, it, the character was always relatable to the audience and the culture that was watching it. That's so interesting. I they do that in in video games too. Apparently, like. like Characters where I think of like like Animal Crossing or even The Sims where they speak kind of like a, a gibberish. Right. They re-record all of that for different languages because different sounds register as kind of like certain Familiar. noises to different languages, mm. right? That's exactly yes. what I did. Yes, so that is I ended so up cool. Recording Gizmo and and you know, in probably eight or nine different dialects. Oh and my it gosh. was never English. Yeah. <laughs> He's multilingual. It's yeah. So cool. No, multi noise. <laughs> sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just a noise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you get to meet Zach Galligan? Like, do you know Zach or no? Was that that was more of a. I think I met thing? him. No, I didn't meet any of the actors. Okay. I just Joe and all the other voice actors. I, I didn't know that they would bring in the voice actors at the same time as you. So that's cool. So like you Frank. worked with well, Frank, Frank Welker. Frank got me into the voice business. Frank Welker. If you don't know Frank, Frank is the voice the of everything. Voice. Yeah. Everything <laughs> yeah. and every animal. I was going to say every... every movie dog you've ever heard is right. Frank yeah. Welker. And every horror movie and every he is. And him and I were good friends. We were on a show called Laugh Tracks together. And he heard me making noises and he said, you should do this. You should make noises. In the, the first thing he got me is I was in a show called Muppet Babies. Mm-hmm. Oh, I loved Muppet, Muppet I loved Babies Muppet growing Babies. up. So I'm Skeeter. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh my God. It's the same voice as Gizmo. Yeah. <laughs> Skeeter, Skeeter talks like this. Oh this my is gosh. Skeeter. Skeeter's, Skeeter's little sister. <laughs> and then I was, and then I did my own show. I did Bobby's World. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Bobby, Bobby is this same voice. This is Skeeter. This is Bobby. <laughs> and then I'm Gizmo. <laughs> you can like hear the slight differences. Slight though. difference. Yeah. I did have other voices. I was also uh, Bunsen Honeydew and Animal. Oh, no way. oh, you were Animal. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bunsen Honeydew. If you don't listen to me, I'll make your sister disappear. <laughs> Oh my gosh. But Gremlins was her first voice uh, no. acting. No. Oh. No. Uh, I think Muppet Babies is before Gremlins. Somebody oh. look that up. I have oh, my wow. information wrong then. Look, so look it up. When did Muppet Babies start? And uh, I think Gremlins is 84, right? Gremlins is 84, yeah. Muppet right. Babies. Uh, is... Not the 2018 version. What's the OG? 84. Same oh, wow. year. So... But I was before because he okay. knew me. He, uh, uh, Frank worked on Muppet, uh, on, uh, Muppet Babies. Frank worked on Bobby's World. Mm-hmm. Frank, but Frank was the, he was originally a comedian oh. and he was a sketch actor. <laughs> and then he started, he just totally, uh, you know, he went into uh, voice and sound effects. And then he said that I have a voice for this too. So it, that became, it's a whole different industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Chelsea is uh, getting into the industry and been, I love it. For... Voice acting is so fun. Yeah. I've just it fallen is. in love with it. It's just, it's so, I don't know, it's like the ultimate 
make believe, you know. It is, but then I had friends in these things called the loop groups. Do you know? Loop yeah. Group? Uh-huh. Yeah. So the loop groups are big in horror. Mm-hmm. So the loop groups are the blood curdling screamers, the crowd sounds, the the weird sounds that you hear afterwards. It's just these people who whose only job it is is to make background noise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're like yeah. the the background the the extras of voice work. Of audio. That's mm-hmm. where the term walla comes from, right? Is yes. it's the idea of if there's people in a restaurant or something, it's walla walla. Walla walla walla. walla. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. So I did a lot on on Gremlins, I did a lot of the Gremlin walla. Okay. Besides Gizmo. So when in the theater scenes, mm-hmm. remember and all that. So uh-huh. I'm I'm in all those scenes, not as Gizmo, but as just general um, uh, Mugwai, yeah, um, just Walla, filling that out and giving it texture because like, d- it's yeah, not but, just one voice doing right. it, right? Yeah. Oh, well, that- they had a lot of voice actors, uh, I, I think, come in and do all those other like non stripe gremlins, oh, yeah, especially that, yeah, that second one. Oh, There's yeah, so many it's, gremlins, <laughs> it's just so I many. I know, but a lot of it's not gremlins. as that many actors. Was there a lot of actors in the in the uh, I saw lists of a bunch of uh actors. I, I only talked about like when I covered it, I only talked about you and Frank just to, yeah. to hone in. But on Frank it, but. did about 10 of the other yeah. sounds and the dogs and anything, <laughs> mm-hmm. anything you hear. He's like yeah. roaring lions in The Lion King. There's this. There was a video. He's everything. He's monster sounds in a lot of yeah. movies. I don't have his his. It's uh, incredible resume, but he is. You should talk to him. I yeah. mean, that would be amazing. I'll, I'll put you in touch with him. <laughs> okay. Great. Yeah, well. That would be Scooby Doo. Also, the yes. uh, oh, voice yes. of Fred forever, and then took right. over for He's Scooby been Fred. for right. a few decades now. Right. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. He was an actor and a comedian. He was in Elvis movies. Elvis. Was he really? <laughs> yes. What like what was it like Blue I can't remember Hawaii? Which one. Those? You look him up. It's up yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. Yeah. Well, I know we said we were going to talk obviously about Gremlins, but I also want to talk about another movie of yours that we actually rewatched this morning as we were getting ready. <laughs> we uh, I ho- it was the first thing I did when I woke up was I just fucking- rolled over, I'm grabbed sorry. the remote, boom, Little, little monsters. monsters. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I grew up. Watching Little Monsters. I was obsessed with the VHS. It was like one of those VHSs where the, you would see the tracking from just being worn just out by it. You know, watching. that was a really hard movie for me. I, I believe it. it. it was is it because it's gross? Is that it's also one? disgusting. Uh, or no? no, no, no. It's not that disgusting when you're on the set. But, okay. Uh, but first of all, the makeup. The makeup. Yeah. How long were you in the chair? For? Four hours no. every oh day. Yeah. We did it in Wilmington, North Carolina Okay. in August. And, you know, because at the time I was doing a, a series, St. Elsewhere, and oh, here nice. here in town in Los Angeles. And uh, so on my months off, I, w- I would always do a movie. In fact, uh, Little Monsters is the reason that I decided not to do any more movies. I had done four or five <laughs> oh movies. Oh, my gosh. Okay. <laughs> yes. Li- but I still have, um, I just showed Kyle, who is a sound engineer on my, on my show, I still have his full getup. I have no, that. like the jacket. And everything. I have the jacket. What? I kept everything. I kept the jacket. I kept the teeth. I kept the uh, what are the horns. Um, I have all the little pieces, oh but God. I kept I kept everything. I'm a hoarder. I keep yeah. everything. <laughs> As you'll know, uh, I have some. Yeah, stuff your collection here. here is amazing. <laughs> so, but so I thought it would be really cool, you know, to kind of like dress up and mm-hmm. be a monster under the bed. But and and I think that. In this day and age, they've advanced the technology in as far as making it very, very comfortable. Mm -hmm. But, you know, ultimately, first of all, I had to get, which they still do, I had to get a cast of my own head so that they could do it. Have you had that done? Yeah, I had my head blow up in a music video. So I had to do the, it was like an hour and a half. You had like a straw that you were. No, the straw straw? distorts it. So they don't do that anymore. They just had to like keep clearing out. Oh, uh, Well, when I had it, it was was a straw. straw? Okay, breathe. So all you have is you have. Your face is just covered. I said, okay, I'll do this movie. Mm -hmm. They were going to make a, uh, whatever the monster look was. They were going to make, before it even molded into what it became. So they put this plaster shit all over your face. And if you have any claustrophobia, you will panic and you just want to rip it off. Mm -hmm. And you can only breathe through straws. Mm -hmm. So that was like a horror show. And it gets with. so hot in there too. Once it's sealed up, it's just it is hot. And you can't breathe. You can't really hear. You, feel, well, you right? can't hear anything. Yeah. And there's weight on your mm-hmm. face. Yeah. Even if you're not claustrophobic, you talk about horror. Mm-hmm. That's a fucking horror. It'll you feel your like, neck. It's you heavy. feel like you're gonna die. I yeah. thought I was gonna die, but that was just making the the mask. Mm-hmm. And then they do sculptures from that mold. 
to cr- to, to try to create, um, you know, Maurice mm-hmm. was the character. And then it's just once they did that, they make these uh, latex applications that go all over your face. So and it was just glued onto every pore, everything. There's mm-hmm. just my whole head is covered all the way down to my neck in just latex rubber, mm-hmm. which is glued directly onto my skin. Yeah, so sweat doesn't have anywhere to go. I've, no, there's I've no had, cooler. Have you had that? Yes, I've had like latex done on my my face and neck, and it's it's gross because the sweat. Yeah, it either just kind of like pools in different spots, or it gets absorbed by all the foam. You know, just I, I used to talk about it in my act, but I won't. I, I I said like after I did that movie, I wouldn't even wear a condom anymore. Sure, I didn't want to. Yeah. I didn't want to do that to my dick. <laughs> <laughs> Let alone my my whole face. Just a whiff of the latex smell. Like nope. <laughs> well, that's so. So that's the other thing. So they they glued it on me, and I'm I'm covered in latex. A lot of this we're in Wilmington, North Carolina, in August. Jeez, yeah. Yeah. It's the humidity and the heat and the you know and the places that we were uh, filming in were not air conditioned. We weren't oh, in no. a in a soundstage. We were in old abandoned asbestos filled um uh, are they just warehouses warehouse oh that's my what God, it looks we like were joking. that's what monster land we looks were joking like. that monster land we're like is this just a warehouse like yeah. what is that and it's it was a warehouse. of course yeah. it is clearly it's, it's just a it's just like wooden pallets you know there's no of. such thing as monster land. <laughs> <laughs> no monster monster land's real and it's in north carolina <laughs> so i would pass out frequently just oh from gosh. heat exhaustion and he's and wearing it, like a leather jacket i'm wearing a leather jacket <laughs> yeah. but uh, but it's 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 the latex and yeah. you can't mm. just take it. All my pores were blocked. And then every night they had to remove it and it's like glue remover and they mm-hmm. peel it off. My skin was like raw and yeah. red. And I think about the first two layers of skin were just ripped off yeah. my face. I've never been in more pain for an extended amount of time in my life than doing little monsters. Gosh, you know, it, it, it yeah. was horrible. You hear those stories about like Jim Carrey doing the Grinch and mm-hmm. taking um, what he took courses where it was like basically how to, it was like meditation and like uh, being able to withstand torture. I forget, he took like some courses with someone who specialized in Just like- to withstand the, the men- process Like of the it? mental training yes. mm-hmm. to withstand, yeah, something Even like everything that. about it, like getting there at four in the morning or yep. five in the yeah, morning yeah. and just sitting in a chair and having to stay still. And then again, uh, I've talked about this often, but I have mental health issues where, uh, you know, I don't like to be touched mm-hmm. and I don't, you know, I have OCD and stuff, but I had to sit in a chair and have uh, sure. uh, uh, people just touching me mm-hmm. for hours and hours and putting appliques around my lips and my mouth and my eyes and my face and my head. It was like a, it was like a three hour panic attack. Yeah, yeah. And then after that, you have I'm to totally covered. And then after four hours of torture, then I go to work. Yeah. Then yeah. your best friend Maurice. Yeah. And, yeah. We're gonna... and he was a really physical character. Yes. You know, yeah. so, it's, so he's the, up here that right. entire movie. <laughs> so you know, the last thing you want to do is sweat. The only thing you can do is sweat. Even yeah. standing still, you're sweating. But you know, he. <laughs> you know, and and uh, <laughs> it was tough. It was tough. And at the same time. We were all in the hotel. I remember there's a bunch of movies being filmed at the same time. Weekend at Bernie's. Oh, okay. okay. Was it the, all those guys were in the same hotel, and I, I was so jealous because nobody, <laughs> especially for the guy who played Bernie, <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't. I he was the opposite of me. He didn't <laughs> yeah, have, yeah. He didn't have to move. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And he had nothing glued to his face. Just his eyes closed, not <laughs> a line to sunglasses remember. Sunglasses over. Uh-huh, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. like everything that I wanted to be, and it was like in front of my face. They were doing. What did you do today? Well, I was just. Sitting in a car and being drove around, driven yeah. around, <laughs> Terry Kaiser, and I'm yeah. in a fucking you know warehouse and it's 110 degrees <laughs> playing I'm, baseball. Yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> You're pissing in a jar at one point in that movie. Well, you know but, that I didn't actually piss. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I just we just it's because we watched it this morning and that scene. I just every time I see it, I kind of can't believe that like a child drinks piss in that movie. Yeah, <laughs> this movie would not be made today. No, no it, God no. no. You you pants a uh, ten year old Fred Savage and a little girl is like nice ass. Yeah, there's a little girl monster that goes nice ass. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Is it great? <laughs> it was so Is funny. it great? I, a few years ago, I yeah. was like, Chelsea, I just remembered this movie from my childhood. We little monster. watch it. We should watch gotta it. I watch watched it. it so much. We watched it and we're like, doesn't hold up. No. We. I it's, just it's, was like, what the fuck? 
and and, uh, and then that? we were we that was told, a review. Yeah, and then we told two of our best friends who watch bad movies. We were like. We should watch you gotta, this. You got to see this. And we watched it with them. And while we were watching it that time, we were we like. We literally made a promise. We were like, there is no reason in the rest of our adult lives that we're ever going to watch Little Monsters again, right? And then we got this And podcast. then we got this. We, and then we got an email. Hey. I'm sorry. <laughs> is, this, is this my apology? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Is this, this why, is why I, you're having me on yeah. to apologize to you to make you like feel better? I about Little yes. Monsters. I w- yeah. Wasting that much of your life <laughs> yeah. and also being so politically incorrect. <laughs> it's well, it's man, astounding. The man's uh, best friend is his right hand Oh my gosh. Joke yes. In a a kid's man's movie. Best Love it. Is, it's, yeah. There are. Yeah. Why don't you bring everything to the forefront again? So that <laughs> this is, Have you just tried to suppress all this? Well, it's just that I think I'm going to be on dead meat and then and I'm canceled. Like, yes. Because <laughs> they do bring up like old tweets and things like this. Why They got a whole fucking movie to cancel me on. Yeah. I mean, Maurice, yeah. Maurice, Maurice is, is very, cancelable. Maurice mm-hmm. is very problematic. He made a kid drink his piss. That's, he did. I did. And it, well, I knew That's it like was going to be problematic. Thing, my daughter, who I do my podcast with, Jacqueline Schultz, I'll drop mm-hmm. her name again, is... Uh, I remember, like, I was in North Carolina for, like, three months. It was three months, and my wife brought my baby to the set. You know, she was probably just turning one at the time. She's 38 now. She's just horrified, Mm -hmm. horrified of me. I couldn't, and I'd go, Jackie, it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. And she was just horrified. She wouldn't go near me, so I traumatized my child. Yeah. I fucked you guys up for a little bit. (laughs) Yep. I ruined your childhood. Yeah. I was inappropriate. It really is the most. This is more of a confessional than Uh an episode. We're really putting you on the spot. (laughs) <laughs> no, it really is the most extreme version of like, you know, when like a dad shaves his mustache and the baby's scared. It's like this time the dad's really? just in That's full. That's your like, analogy? No, no, no. But I'm just saying it's like that, but just cranked up to 11. You're in full monster makeup. Yeah. That's I like- am. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, you know, in reading the script, I thought it was going to be this nice little fun romp. <laughs> we did it at the same time as they were doing, um, um, what's the Michael Keaton movie? Uh uh, Beetlejuice? Yes. Oh, okay. Isn't that the same year? It's uh, around the, or it's, 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 it's around the same time. Yeah, yeah around Maurice the same is time. very Beetlejuice. He didn't, esque. that didn't come out yet. Okay. You know, and uh, so it was around the same time. Sure. There was a movie, that, there was a, a genre of monster movies mm-hmm. or weird movies where these were these fun loving child friendly like monsters. monster squad yes oh, yeah. okay yeah that take you into so there was a lot of movies like that at that time and this was one of them mm-hmm. and um which didn't really work out i think um the director didn't direct anything after this no <laughs> way oh god <laughs> got put in director well, what's, jail what's, for what's monster crazy Land. to me is little monsters came up before aladdin and there's a part in Little Monsters where it's like when you first show up and you're this big blue fun guy and <laughs> I think you make a joke, like, I'm not going to grant you three wishes or something. Yeah, Fred and, Savage asks for wishes. Yeah. But like Maurice is very like genie Yeah, he yeah. is. In like the he's performance like and he's genie. blue. And it's like, oh, they're ripping off. Wait, no, yeah, wait this is minute. before. So mm-hmm. yeah, maybe yeah. Robin yeah. Williams original, ripped off yeah. you. <laughs> You know? Really? Maybe. I, didn't, I didn't even think of that. I, I didn't think of any good coming from this movie, <laughs> except the fact that it allows me to be on your uh, on your. <laughs> no, podcast. this is such a full circle moment for us. I'm so yeah, glad. Really? Is. Yes, this is great. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, l- listen, I never look back on anything that I have done and uh, with regret, mm-hmm. and, and it's just uh, it. If nothing else, it informed me. Yeah, that it's an I, experience. Yeah. It's an experience, and I also know now. You know, if somebody says, hey, we want you to play this and you're going to be in full make, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but I wouldn't have known I didn't want to do that if I didn't do Little Monsters. And then also, it's also been fascinating how uh, much of a of um, an effect it had on certain people, good and bad. You know, there's a lot, if you look up online, you know, a Maurice tattoos. Yeah. Really? A I lot bet. of people <laughs> have put Maurice on their bodies for <laughs> Forever. Eternity. Yeah. So, uh, you know, is as much as it wasn't the best experience of my life, the fact that whatever I did affected mm-hmm. people in a positive way and they want to, you know, remember it and, and kind of honor it. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no better honor than having somebody want to put an image of you. Maybe I'm in the middle of the sentence. I'm rethinking myself. <laughs> yeah, people but, have had this tattooed on them, the yeah. Dead Meat logo, and it's like someone has wow. my face tattooed on them. That's and it's, right. Someone got your it's face. It's a really beautiful tattoo, which is yeah. good. You know, uh, it was really well done. So that's a really really. <laughs> but yeah. Yes. Is it a guy? No. 
No. <laughs> and, and where on her is it? I'm not sure, actually. But you saw it. You know about it. It was like a close-up picture. I oh. think it might be on her arm. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah, they're Googling the oh, here tattoo. That first image looks like it's uh, the logo with some teeth in between it. Oh, what is that? That's talk you about. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, that's on someone's wow. person. So that's on a person. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So and, that, do you not think of that as an honor? Like if no, you know yeah, that I somebody put that on their body for eternity, you've yeah. obviously made more than an impression it's, for sure it's an honor and also i feel this kind of responsibility that now i'm like i can't make them regret getting that you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah well there's nothing see you you still got this ongoing you know dead meat i have the rest of my life to fuck up you know? <laughs> yeah. right you know it, it, uh, maurice is maurice there's yeah. not he's never gonna be again mm-hmm. yeah you know or it's not gonna be me maurice doesn't have a twitter where he can say something <laughs> yeah. and get in no. trouble <laughs> but people have put giant maurice's on their body do you have a giant maurice like oh yeah yeah i would love to maurice see that tattoo that. yeah little monsters it. tattoo it would be a little monsters tattoo but that is a cool thing though is even if something was like either a weird experience or something where you're like god i would never do that again the kind of ripple effect <laughs> look at that, that first that one there look at this look at look at <laughs> that's the, that is isn't that amazing oh my god that's an incredible piece of art it's wow. very detailed yeah it's incredible and that's me yeah well yeah. it's not really me he's got a it is me it is you. Yeah. yeah it is me it looks like me i bet <laughs> someone has a tattoo of just you just howie mandel. i guarantee it oh for let's sure. see just if somebody has a howie, howie mandel, mandel, howie tattoo. mandel tattoo do it's you have any bu- tattoos or is it i have tattooed my own face on my face Oh, look, it's all the characters that you just talked about. So there's, oh, there's Bobby's Bobby. World, yep. and there's Gizmo. More Maurice. Another Maurice. Yep. Is there any just Howie Mandel? I'm shocked there's if there's be. not. There's got to be. They're just afraid to show it. Just Howie Mandel. No. Nobody. Do. Oh, wait. Oh. Mm? No, that's not me. Okay. Oh, there is one. There's one. If Is that me right there? Yeah, you're clicking on that. Is that me? Oh, no. That's like a, re- like a weird, realistic Rick and Morty. Oh, yeah. That's weird. It's scary. I always get Rick and Morty mixed up with me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think anybody just has Howie Mandel. Someone's Though, out there. Hey, Dead Meat fans, if you're listening to this and you have a tattoo of Howie Mandel yeah. on your person, Specifically please. Howie, not yeah. in character. No. It's just got to be like his face. I don't you have a lot of Gizmo. fans. We want to yeah. see it. <laughs> Hey, I want to talk to you about our sponsor this week, Dadgrass. You ever have those nights where you're just tossing and turning and you're replaying every single conversation you had that day or even week in your head over and over and over again and you just can't get to sleep? That's me. Like almost every night. I'm such an anxious person. I have crazy social anxiety. I relive every conversation I ever have. It's a nightmare. But Dangrass is there to help you through those nighttime ruminations. So you can fall asleep fast and stay snoozing until morning. It really does help me kind of take my mind off a bunch of things at once and just focus on falling asleep. Daggrass is legal, organic, smokable hemp that relaxes your body and mellows your mind. Their 100% organic pre-rolled joints are very low in THC and high in CBD, so you can enjoy all the effects of cannabis while keeping a clear head. And if you're not a fan of smoking, Daggrass also offers the finest tinctures and gummies on the market. All the mellow goodness, no smoke required. And the best part, all Daggrass products are federally legal for ages 18 and over and it ships right to your door anywhere in the U.S. So if you're looking for a new buzz or a chill way to enjoy an old favorite, Dadgrass will leave you in a great mood. Right now, Dadgrass is offering our listeners 20% off your first order when you go to dadgrass.com slash deadmeat. Go to dadgrass.com slash deadmeat for 20% off your first order. One more time, that's dadgrass.com slash deadmeat. <laughs> this is actually a, an interesting. I just thought of this. Do you have a hard time going back and watching stuff you were in or listening to stuff you were in? Because I do. Like even if you I have a hard time watching stuff that I'm on. No, yeah, no, no. she's always talking about how much <laughs> yeah, she hates I it. I can't watch Howie Mandel shit. We made the promise we'll never watch Little Monsters again. There's no reason to do that. I can't. Yes, I'm not a fan of how I sound or how I look. Yeah, yeah. I think no one is. I don't think no one's is. a fan of how I sound <laughs> and how <laughs> I look. Damn it, Howie. You keep setting these little traps up for I us know. and we no, walk I right don't. into them. I don't, but I'm fascinated more about how people, I do read uh, the comments. I'm more fascinated rather than listening to me and watching me, 
I'm more, uh, and I read everything that people say about me. You read the comments on your all the comments. Oh, you're like me him. too. I can't. She has to avoid it. I read every comment that you I know. Can. I have people, you know, that that will listen and edit for me and uh, produce it for me. But then I don't listen to it again. But I will read every com- mm. every comment. Yeah. And I, you, you, uh, I gotta say, even though we have a nice fan base, it's like daggers into my heart. Yeah, because yeah. you'll it's read a hundred nice ones, and then there'll the be one, one mean, mean one, one, and that sticks with you. Yeah. I wish there was just one mean one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of mean ones. People who comment are usually mean. It's like Yelp. You know, mm-hmm. Yelp. Yelp is never. People don't go on Yelp traditionally Mm -hmm. to praise unless Mm -hmm. they're a a relative Mm -hmm. yeah if your friend opens up a restaurant or your friend then you'll give them a nice yelp those are always the people that are in some way related or have a relationship (laughs) to whoever they're yelping the rest of the yelp you're gonna go on yelp to when you have a problem yeah to fuck with somebody and you're gonna go the comments are mostly not nice Yeah. So even like, you know, after having such a like storied career and just doing storied so storied like, career. Yeah. A storied. The word storied seems like a, a just, menacing. It, and, no, it's just you, like such a you fo- guys don't get away from the horror show. Of it all, <laughs> do you? He had a storied, a storied career. But then it all went horribly wrong. <laughs> yes. After having but no, after, you know, after all that, it's like you you still you know, someone can say something mean and it still like affects I'm not, you know, no matter what you do human. and how long you're human. Yeah. yeah. And also I'm a stand up comedian mm-hmm. and there I've told the stories before, but what you just said is is absolutely right. You know, I could be in a room and there could be five thousand people just roaring and mm-hmm. laughing and you see one person in front not laughing, it just becomes about them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I you know, I walk off stage and they go, Great show. I go, Did you see the guy in the front? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. He didn't like one fucking thing I said. He thought mm-hmm. I was and that's and that's all that sticks in your mind. So yeah. by the same token, you know, you do an episode of a podcast or you do a TV show mm-hmm. and you read one comment, that's all that sticks. And yeah. that's all that hurts. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I've read before that say, you know, if you're going to believe the bad ones, if you're going to believe the good ones, you got to believe the bad ones. Mm. I, I think I believe everything. I The good ones we hope are expected. You know, we all show up and do a, a broadcast mm-hmm. or a show or uh, hoping that we're going to be good. And when somebody says, hey, that was good, that was interesting, you were great, that comes with an expectation. Well, that's what I, that's what I was trying to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then they start talking about something personal, mm-hmm. something about your looks, something about whoever you are, and it goes, that cuts mm-hmm. deep. Mm-hmm. And you could say, I don't. Maybe I shouldn't be talking about the fact that I read them because those people who want to hurt me know how to hurt me. They're like, sure. oh, yes, we've <laughs> yeah. made contact. We're successful. And that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. They're well, trying yeah, to troll. It's like a, like a school bully, you know? Yeah. They, yeah. A lot of horror movies have been made about that, too. Mm-hmm. Right? What was that horror? There was a horror movie last year about somebody who was bullied online and then they ended up oh, killing themselves. Oh, was that themselves. Unfriended? Yes. Unfriended was a few yes. years ago. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Unfriended. Yeah. Unfriended. So mm-hmm. the, 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 that kind of speaks to the fact of how people are affected by mm-hmm. online comments so yeah. much so that an online comment is the seed of a horror movie. Yeah. The the way that I try and, you know, console myself if I read something that's mean or that, you know, just like a not nice thing mm-hmm. about me personally. It's I try to remember it's like the Yelp thing where it's like positive reviews. Okay, if it's like family or people who are maybe obligated to be nice to you, if you're making something and it gets to a certain point, you know, a certain size or, you know, you have a larger audience than are just people, you know, you have to kind of look at it as like, OK, my stuff is now getting to people that are no longer obligated to be nice to me. And it, that in itself is a sign that like you, you're making something that's, you know, successful. On yeah, some that's level. successful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that people are seeing. And that that philosophy that you've just imparted on us is enough to not let it bother you when you get something it's negative. It's not always oh, no, it's, it's very <laughs> But I still <laughs> kind of have to remind myself like that's just going to come with Well, I've talked about yeah. this before. The territory. You, you know, it does. Yeah. And but there's always far more people that don't like you or don't even give a shit or care than there are no matter how many people you are able to garner Mm -hmm. you know and those are the loudest Mm -hmm. and that's so negative but it's so true (laughs) it is yeah it is a life is a horror show (laughs) it is for me (laughs) no i i don't know (laughs) Uh, our our fans are like 
our comments are generally pretty positive. We're, yeah. we're lucky in that sense. It's, yeah, it's it's such a minority where anyone's like me. Yeah, we get positive. <laughs> you got negative. <laughs> I'm sure yours are mostly positive too. You're just you don't remember I, that. I don't they remember. Don't stick them. with you. I don't you, remember. You breeze them. past them while you're scrolling, and then you stop when you see the negative one, and you think about replying, and maybe you do reply. Are, That's are you, sometimes for me. Are you also an <laughs> anxious reply. person? Because I'm a very anxious person. I wonder. Oh, anxiety. I don't know if you. Uh, th- 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 yes. So I I suffer. I'm medicated as we speak. I suffer from anxiety, depression, um, OCD, ADHD. I almost have the entire album. I have three out of four of those as yeah. well. You so. win. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a group therapy. I show. know. No, it's good. Like I, people, people who listen to the podcast do like when we we try to be. I don't know, like either open about stuff like that, or you know, guests if they're comfortable talking about those experiences. It really, well, I've been it means a lot to people. Well, yeah. I'm open about my mental health mm-hmm. issues, uh, you know, and I'm a lot older than you guys. And, you know, we're in my generation, there's a stigma attached mm-hmm. to, there still is, it mm-hmm. even in anybody's generation. Yeah. But it's, it's, uh, it's hard. But since I've been open about it and uh, I kind of lend my voice and my knowledge and my openness to just, the conversation it makes me feel better Mm -hmm. like you're not alone and yeah so that's i don't i don't even remember if there was a question that i'm answering but no, uh, just that that's it, part of the ADHD. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> I was distracted by something. Dude, be, having ADHD and hosting a podcast, it's incredible. The places your brain will go while your mouth is just going, and you're like, I don't know where. I, like, where was this? Where did we start? Where did yeah. we start? What was the question? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, on mine, part of the uh, the bad uh, um, comments that I get is because I have ADHD. ADHD. I'll ask you a question, and you start answering the question. And then in the middle of you answering the question, I kind of lose focus mm-hmm. and ask another question. And yeah. they always say, How are you fucking interrupt? Let them talk. <laughs> and I want to let you talk. And I am interested. My mind just goes, It's just weird. It's who I am. But I'm genuinely interested. Mm-hmm. And I genuinely want to hear the answers. Yeah. But I genuinely have uh, um, kind of a, a mental health issue. I yeah. find that sometimes, yeah, in a conversation, my brain will latch on to something that does pop up in the middle of like, you know, an answer or response someone is giving. And then my brain just kind of wants to follow that thing and doesn't hear the rest of whatever is being said. If it was just the two of us in here, this would be. A <laughs> yeah, that, that conversation would just be all <laughs> You're tangents. Our anger. Oops. All tangents. Oops, yeah. all tangents. Well, that's that's what I am, and that's my life, and that's my career, and everything that I've done is like, oops, my tangent it, it is a great title for my career. Because my career, I've done, you know, and I love, I, I do horror movies, I've done TV, I'm a, You've done game shows? I want to yeah. ask about your game show career, because I love game shows. Um, okay, deal or no deal, right? There. Yeah, hell yes. Dave and Buster. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Like, so for our live shows, um, we've only done a few, but our Dead Meat live shows, I turn into game shows because I... The Splices, right? Yeah, we it's, we play the yeah. Splices, right? Oh, that's great. Where <laughs> I find um, horror props that have been sold in auction and I get like the prices that they've gone for and we play Prices Right style games with like... Me having to guess what they are, and I'll bring you yeah. So it'll be like, up. okay, this knife from Scream Four sold in 2014 for how much money? I love that. Yeah, it's so much fun. <laughs> I love game because game, and I didn't want to do it. You know, the oh, first really? game I did was Deal or No Deal, mm-hmm. and and that was in 2005. And in 2005, comedians did not do game shows. Mm-hmm. You know, there was a, right pre now, Drew Carey, yeah, pro, uh, way pre yeah. Drew Carey, oh, sure. <laughs> pre uh, Steve Harvey, pre yeah. Mm-hmm. All these people. In fact, uh, probably the first comedian before me was uh, Groucho Marx, who did You Bet Your Life. And um, I said no to it three times, and my wife made me take the deal. No pun intended. (laughs) And I did it, and I was so nervous that it was going to be the nail in the coffin of my career, but it was probably the biggest success I've had. But what I learned is that, you know, there's nothing more engaging than a game because mm-hmm. even you, you're you playing it, you two are playing the slices right or whatever how, whatever you're calling it, but I, listening to it, want to guess. I mm-hmm. want to hear the answer. It kind of engages <laughs> me as a listener, and it's fun for you to play the game. So if you're playing a game, there's very little kind of noise that you can make, whether it's on the internet, whether it's on audio, whether it's on visual, 
television or where you can kind of find something that kind of is a magnet to engage an audience. And if you can come up with something that's play along. Yeah. Then. And she comes up with so many different games. Uh, one of the ones that our <laughs> audience loves is Guess the Kill. Yeah. Where, and because we're on a podcast, it is an audio based thing. She will play an, a yeah, that's sound. The hard thing is I have to come up with games that also work as just audio because we, we do do video for the podcast. But if people are just listening, it's like, OK, I have to make something that works if you are just listening to it. Is so your you, is your audience more listening than uh, than visual? Yeah, no. what are the numbers? Cuz you got the, you, you got really only. good numbers on on video. More people yeah. watch it on YouTube, okay. but yeah. enough people listen to it that I do have to remember like Yeah. So you're hearing the sound of the kill and they have to guess yeah. what and the I kill. have to it guess is and the it, hardest it drives me insane. Thing. And that's part of the fun. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. yeah. So it'll range from like one of them I did that I think stumped you was um Frankenstein throwing the girl into the lake. Oh yeah, so, so you hear the like the splash, splash yeah. and him going. <laughs> <laughs> but out of context, you you don't think, oh, that's Frankenstein. You're just like, what is this like weird moaning noise going on? And then you kind of start to rely on, okay, what's the sound quality? Does this sound old? Yeah, like, what, you know. It's Have a you lot ever of tried fun. to do some of these for television? I mean, that would be the dream. Mm -hmm. um, Have you ever presented that? No. No. Uh, I would we, love we should to. make we should have made like several pitch decks by now. Several, this point several pitch career. several PowerPoints. Yeah, well, I would love sure. to if you if you're interested in doing television that we should talk yeah. after this uh, yeah. yes. podcast. Because that's what I do. I produce things mm -hmm. that I'm not in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you have a lot of content here that is really good for television. The truth of the matter is though, television is kind of a dying that's the dinosaur. Yeah. It's a you, weird thing. Yeah. Well, you reach many more people online and in audio and video and on YouTube than you could ever reach on that, television. That's such a, it's such the weird thing between uh, yeah, you're right. We reach a ton of people online, more people than uh you know, decades ago someone hosting a small show might hope to reach. And yet there's still, you know, I, I feel like from our perspective this uh idea that Oh, but we're still not as legitimate as like a television production. That's, or like I a, think that's just a perception and not, yeah. not yeah. the truth. Because but all, I think people in, in linear television are looking to people like you to say, oh, well, look at this audience. We're losing our audience. Mm -hmm. We That's legitimate. They know how to engage and garner an audience. And this, you know, that's why a lot of, if you look, a lot of people are using, you know, digital people and uh, people from online. But the truth of the matter is, that um, I think linear television is is going away. The way people consume mm -hmm. their entertainment. Yeah, you know, you found a way to the people who watch horror movies and watch horror shows. This is they show up every week, once a week. Is this once a week? Uh, the podcast, podcast is every, is every week. other week. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. but they show week. up mm -hmm. just to. This is a more fun way to even consume. If I'm a fan of horror movies, yeah, I will show up once every two weeks to kind of get my kill counts, to hear the movies, to see the clips, to see what you guys think of it. It's kind of an interesting. Yeah, and and we like too that it helps these movies that we like because uh, people will say, oh. The, the podcast for Pearl just came out. Okay, I'm going to go watch Pearl yeah. first and then come back and listen to the podcast. And so we're helping those filmmakers too and get more eyes on horror. Or just like, oh, you're talking about this movie called Frogs? I'm going to go find frogs. And <laughs> yeah. then it's just this weird movie from the 70s that all of a sudden a bunch of people are watching again. <laughs> I've had, there have been movies that uh, I've covered on The Kill Count that then trended on Pornhub. Yes, that's always so because exciting. Because I'll, I'll cover like Slumber Party Massacre and obviously I can't show any of those parts on, on YouTube. There's a lot of boobies in that. So like yeah. I, I'll show like the censored scenes and then someone will be like, dude, Slumber Party Massacre was trending on Pornhub. People were looking up those scenes because of the kill count and that's happened more than once. I've gotten term like movies, trending. random horror movies yeah, trending on Pornhub. Yeah, that's been like a career home. Like that's that was very exciting. Yeah. <laughs> but that just shows you you're engaging the audience. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Engaging something <laughs> and engorging something. Yeah. yeah oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> but so you are like, have you have you always been a horror fan or? I like horror. I see this is for me because I have ADHD. Mm -hmm. Horror is something that engages you. If you, mm -hmm. you you could watch another movie, and because I have, you, you know, I can get bored of a movie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to 
um, uh, feed an appetite of like, I don't know what's around the mm-hmm. corner and you're going to scare and you're going to make my heart. And even if that I- I- is just uh, one of those smash scares where you just like, it's just a noise, mm-hmm. you know, oh, and that, that or if, if I'm seeing something that I can never unsee again, these, it's, it's, it's much louder and noisier mentally than just a nice little story. Yeah, I have found, and and this rings true for me, just in, in my personal experience, is having you know ADHD or anxiety, watching a scary movie because I am in the moment so frightened and I'm anticipating what's next. I can't think about other stuff like real life. My shit. brain is so yeah, like yeah. real life anxiety or just you know my mind isn't wandering because I'm so tuned in to whatever's because I'm I'm scared and I've been married for 42 years and the first date. Um, I took my wife out on was The Exorcist. The Perfect. opening the opening week of the original Exorcist. Wow. That is so great. So the opening week of the original Exorcist, which at the time, I think it still kind of holds up a I little bit. I love it. Yeah, yeah. But, but at the time, I don't know if you're aware, but there were stories in the news mm-hmm. about, sh- well, stuff that uh, apparently happened on the set, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. creepy things that happened to set, and people were dying in the theaters, mm-hmm. like weird things. So we went to this movie. It was more of an event, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was, should we go? Should we? Yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. And we're, we're going to brave it, and we're going to watch it. We're not just going to a movie. This mm-hmm. was a very fucking scary event. Yeah. And also, putting it into perspective, we didn't have, you know, it, it now that's not a big deal, the special effects, but to see her head mm-hmm. turn 360 and to watch that vomit being shot all over the fucking screen. I mean, now, you know, with technology and because of where we are, that those things are nothing. But in 1972, when did that movie come out? 1974? 1970. Yeah. Yeah. Around there. Yeah. This stuff had never been seen before. Mm -hmm. And when you're seeing something like you've never seen before, it was like you could not get that out of your mind. Yeah. It's still scary. Yeah. What is it? 73. Oh, Very 70. end of Okay, so split yeah. the difference. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. December 26th, the day after Christmas. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. Scream came so out. So we saw it that Christmas. we saw it that week. I saw it in in 73. Wow. With her. That was the first movie I took her to. I've been dating wow. for a little while. You've been married for how long? 40 we got married seven years later. Wow. Okay. After that, we got married in 80. So that's t- uh, 43 years. Our first date movie together was also a horror movie. So that, but we watched Hellraiser yeah. together. So that bodes I well, think, I think. I think that people, if you want to be romantic, you got to take the person you care about to see death and destruction. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that way it, it creates a tolerance for a relationship that is... <laughs> you know, it's not like this, honey. Like when she, when you think you two are having a bad day, yeah. it's not uh-huh. like Slumber Party Massacre Three. Come uh-huh. on, yeah. I know you think I'm an asshole and you think that I'm being unfair. I didn't come in and slash your throat. Yeah, exactly. It just gives you something to compare life to. There you go. <laughs> sure. That's why, like, I think on, on your podcast, we were talking about how the husbands and horror movies are always the ones who are like, it's fine, honey. This house isn't haunted. So it's always like, don't be a horror movie husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've had the idea of ranking the worst horror movie husbands. Yes. I want to do a so bracket of the worst horror movie husbands and boyfriends because there's so many of them in so many different flavors. Yeah. Like, the killers from the original Scream spoilers, but her boyfriend is the the killer. He's got to be. Or like Rosemary's Baby. Rosemary's He's, Baby. Oh, yeah, right. yeah, that guy's selling out his unborn kid. Mm-hmm. Right, but, get famous. Mm-hmm. Really, but I get that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure, you did the yeah. same. Yeah, I would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you met a little, little Satan. Whatever. You met Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is Rosemary's Baby. There yeah. you go. <laughs> do you do you have a favorite horror movie, or is that? And it's a hard question. It is a hard question. I, you know, but The <laughs> Exorcist is emblematic of my sense, career. Yeah. Uh-huh. I remember that. I remember that feeling. I've never. I'm. Uh, we talked on my podcast about. Uh, you know, I'm a bit of a. Uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, I don't believe anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. skeptic. Yeah. Yeah, skeptic. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, I believed at that time that, you know, I heard this story and we hadn't been, you know, kind of 
washed with all this bullshit press that we're all washed with now and there was no internet so to hear that people died on the set and there mm-hmm. were hauntings you those kind of fact thing. check it you couldn't yeah. just google right. that was real. right sure. i couldn't google yeah. there was no so, so that, that 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 kind of had a, a an imprint on me like that was like really scary yeah, yeah. you know and so was poltergeist because oh, yeah. i believe that that was there was some Yes, that's really yeah. to be Someone very cursed production. Mm-hmm. We did an, a podcast episode about cursed horror movies. Because they all died, right? Didn't they? The little girl died. The little yeah. girl and the, the other... One of uh, the the sister, I think, she was, was murdered. murdered. by her boyfriend at the time. Yeah, yeah. It was messed up. That episode actually really depressed me. I yeah, did not enjoy not, researching it. You didn't it. like that one. Because it just ends up being learning about a whole bunch of stuff that happened in real life to people that's tragic and yeah. untimely. But I find that because I have these mental health issues and because I'm medicated, I can't get scared anymore. Yeah, you have I to don't keep have looking for the next. I'm trying. Thing. Yeah. You know, I have. I'm, I'm my my emotions. I don't feel uh, pain, and I don't. Uh, I don't feel fear. Mm-hmm. Okay, but it's I don't kinda... feel depressed. Yeah, sure. sure I'm just sure. feel leveled out there. I'm just kind of leveled out yeah. and dead. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> but I like to, which makes me search out. You know, horror, mm-hmm. and I want to. I mm-hmm. want, uh, you know, my, uh, you know, senses to have. That's why I love thrill rides. Mm-hmm. I love horror movie. I'll go to anything that's supposed to be scary mm-hmm. just to feel something. Have you Have you gone skydiving? No. Oh, that's, that's, awesome. that's pretty have good. Have you done that? Yeah. We've done it once. Yeah. I would do it again. You can't say that because the life insurance people. Oh, yeah. They'll get mad at us. They'll get mad at us. We were applying for life insurance around the exact time we went skydiving with some friends. And did we stupidly disclose that? Well, they asked. Why would that come up? They asked. And that affects your rate. Yes. Because they were like, oh, are you planning on making this a hobby? And we're like, no, we're just going for When we leave this office, we're going to go jump out of a plane. Yeah. (laughs) And I was like, have a policy. I was like, we work from home. We don't drive. We don't. We barely ever drive. Driving, Not driving is more dangerous than skydiving. A thousand times more dangerous than skydiving, which is so. Like, did you just? You just? Did you just fuck up your? Or we edit that out of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, just cut it. I think at this point it's fine. Yeah, whatever, whatever. We'll pay the higher premiums to go skydiving, okay? Prudential or whatever. So do you have a? Do you have a policy on each other? Because this is a, a good for a <laughs> yeah. for a horror movie. Yes. this is a good beginning. Right. Yes. Yeah. Do you have an like, equal money on each person? Like life. Yeah. I don't even know how it works. Oh, exactly. we, you we, don't know how it works. Bullshit. Dude, no, we pay people to do that shit for us. We're not adults. We know how we to make to YouTube videos, <laughs> and that's about it. And we pay people to. But do all somebody the other came shit. to you and said, "Get like, get a policy yeah. on each other." Yeah, we have insurance people, and they're like. They told us to get the house insurance, which, you know. I well, you have a salesman. You have an insurance salesman <laughs> who's just trying to take your. A man your showed up with a suitcase at our door. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, we we're like, oh, this well dressed some... gentleman. Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Tweed jacket. It's the insurance salesman. Yeah. <laughs> it's always the insurance. Ooh, I, I wonder, is there not a horror movie about an insurance salesman? An insurance salesman. salesman. You know what sure one I've is. thought of? Uh, there should be one about a substitute teacher. Like the sub, you know. I oh. bet I feel there like, is. Like, I don't know. The thing. There's I don't horror know. movies about everything. Yeah, the there really stepfather. is. Stepfather. If yeah. there's one about a tire, if there's yeah, one about a couch, a couch mm-hmm. if there's sand. one, if if there's one about sand, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. are you telling me there isn't an insurance salesman that's gonna rye? <laughs> well, like I, I don't know. Would youths know but what like, an insurance salesman is? What would that be? It'd be nowadays? him filling out paperwork <laughs> and you know. I don't know. Would be that's an interesting. His concept. policy is to kill. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. I see that. I see that. You know, he gets his name on all the policies. Exactly. Or somebody, yeah. his partner's mm-hmm. name, mm-hmm. he kills. There was somebody I like that. I think H.H. Holmes did that. The guy who built that, like, murder, murder mansion murder in yeah. Chicago. I think he would take out life insurance policies on people who stayed there. That, yes. Like, during the 1800s. That was, like, the Chicago World's Fair. Oh, so yeah. So people wow. were into, I think that's what he did. You guys are really into death and <laughs> murder and dead meat. I think it's because... I'm an anxious person, which I know sounds weird, but I think when I'm able to find, you know, in horror movies, at least I'm not like huge into true crime. I I find it interesting, but I don't find it entertaining. But like death in in horror movies, being able to find that entertaining and even laugh at it, I find is kind of a balm for my anxiety about more existential. You know, but that's the truth. They they were doing a study. If you look at, I know you guys are more into horror Mm -hmm. and not true crime, but Mm -hmm. true crime is 
real life horror. Mm-hmm. And and in if you look at the stations that do the the networks that do that, they're female networks. Mm-hmm. You know, if you look at Oxygen, oh, and yeah. you look at the and if you did a an analytics on the the people that are watching the ID channel, mm-hmm. it's mostly women. women. Yeah, and mostly women are watching snapped mm-hmm. and, and murder mysteries and and all that and there's a reason for that i think it compartmentalizes your fears because mm-hmm. that happens to them or you figured out how they figured it out mm-hmm. or how to avoid it mm-hmm. or how and and it's it's fascinating to me my wife watches nothing but murder yeah true and mayhem. crime is huge among women yeah. well she sure. likes murder mayhem she likes horror yeah mm-hmm. she just likes a lot of blood yeah. I yeah. should be concerned. That's why I'm thrilled to be here today, <laughs> away from home, because I always think that she's planning. And I'm, see, when your wife loves murder and mayhem, but you're known, uh, me, I'm talking about, as being <laughs> annoying, those two things, they, they're scary you to put that together. You voice one more goddamn time. Oh, she doesn't find any joint. <laughs> hey, honey. Hey, doesn't honey. get you out of anything. No, yeah. nothing now. Been how many no, years? 45 years. I feel of, nothing when hey, I hear that voice. Honey. <laughs> Why do you hate me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's so weird. Like, I know, I feel like 75% of all the other women I know watch, like, those true crime documentaries and stuff. It's so weird. And those podcasts, like, true crime podcasts. They're they're number one. They're the the biggest podcast. And they're the biggest podcast for women. Mm -hmm. The audience is probably, like, 80, 90% women. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I watch it with her. And it, she gets mad at me because I laugh because I hear them saying things, you know. There's some. They're so sensational sometimes. Where it's this just... one's a real who done it. Yeah. Well, isn't everyone a real who done <laughs> yes, it? Yeah. Or they find a head in the desert, and uh, I hear the cops say they they expect that they 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 think there might be some foul play. Sure. Yeah. 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 There's a head. There's just a head. <laughs> yeah. You think there might be foul play? Mm-hmm. That wasn't. This is a natural, natural cause. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> His head got cut off and rolled into the desert naturally. <laughs> yeah, the coroner's like, "Well, here's what we think the cause of death is." <laughs> He's like, "It might be decapitation due to the head being separated from the body." But that's why I like. I, so I find true crime kind of boring, mm-hmm. but I find horror mm-hmm. amazing. Yeah, and especially kind of. I, I keep thinking about you know you're talking about the exorcist and the kind of sensational like oh did you hear people are passing out at screenings right and right. just i love when horror movies get that kind of reputation cuz they're terrifier, terrifier too. 2 did you see Recently. terrifier 2 no that's what with a uh, jericho's Chris, in it, yeah. Chris jericho's mm-hmm. in yeah, yeah yeah i saw i've seen clips of it and mm-hmm. i watched a little bit of it because he was on my podcast yeah. so i kind of i I have enough to know the mm-hmm. movie and know what it's about and yeah. know and know nope. the, and see the and I saw the clown, you know. <laughs> so yeah, so right. I I know I know what it is, but um th- and that's the thing about me, I I've seen everything. Mm-hmm. I know a so much. I know about so many things that I know so little about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If that makes any Just sense, bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't watch anything all the way through, but I want to know about it and mm-hmm. I want to have a point of reference. Sure. Yeah. But uh, but it, it, to speaking to your uh, last comment, that's what when the Blair Witch yeah. Project came out, that was so much fun to have mm-hmm. these discussions. Like even before it came out, when they were releasing things online, and it was. It, it, for me, that was the first of the found footage kind of films yeah. mm-hmm. that came out. So the the fact that there was talk that that was real mm-hmm. was incredibly intriguing and and brilliantly uh, promoted. Yeah, and I so feel like that was the last time that happened because that was right as that the was internet that was perfect becoming more sweet mainstream. spot where the internet it was easier to disguise the fact that it wasn't real because those actors did have like imdb pages but they were able to edit them and be like hasn't been seen yeah since i know whenever. i think didn't the actors have to agree like you have to lay low for like a year yeah. after this comes out to kind of well, keep up the illusion give somebody of, 50 bucks they're gonna do anything sure yeah. <laughs> i remember our friend uh ryan turek who he works at, at blumhouse i think he said he was at a film festival where blair witch screened or something and he Walked out and there was like a blank VHS on his car. I th- I remember he told the story when he was on our podcast. Maybe I'll edit it in. But he mm-hmm. talks about how there was like this blank tape and it was like a copy of the movie. Right. And he watched it and he was like, that was like the most scared I've ever because it was like, what is what the fuck is this? Yeah. Like, just, did just I this actually stumble upon tape. this actual tape? And like the marketing for that was so cool. So good. But yeah. that's the beauty of these 
of horror movies and horror movies, you have an opportunity to be incredibly creative mm-hmm. in how to market it. I'm yeah. noticing people doing that now. There was one, we had this people, what was the thing? There was something flying over. I, I, I was talking to an advertising company that got, I can't remember what, it, what movie it was, but they did something with drones and they put these drones in, in one of the characters that, it, I'm not going to make any sense right now. <laughs> but marketing mm-hmm. of a horror movie mm-hmm. is got to be amazing. Yes, yeah, Smile mm-hmm. recently came oh, out. Oh, that and was that, great. That had a thing where people would become possessed by something that like made them do, like, a, creepy do a creepy smile. smile. So the movie hired people to what sit in they, at baseball they would, games. They would, that was it. That yeah, was, that the was actors one. at baseball games right behind home plate where they're just smiling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? It's and so and sadly enough, the, the promos and all those things I saw were so much better than the Oh, oh I like Smile. smile. It, was, it was the it highest grossing me. horror film of last year. Yeah. I know. It was. Uh, I think Megan Three is gonna win it. Oh yeah, we well <laughs> we Megan, uh, Megan. Yeah, just came out this year technically, but it already passed Scream last year's Scream budget. Yeah. Like it's doing great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Is it is it the second one? Or I said three, but is it isn't it, wasn't there a Megan before? No, no it's, it's just, just spelled it's spelled M three G A N. So they screwed themselves over for that third movie yeah. title. They they greenlit a sequel already, so they're gonna make the sequel. But right. it was an original. Yeah, but it's not. Is it not the same people that did what? what what's the other doll movie? Oh, um, Annabelle. Well, no. Annabelle There's uh, so many. <laughs> Annabelle, Annabelle is Chucky. an offshoot of The Conjuring, which James Wan did, and he was a producer on Megan. Sure, they're yeah. cousins, I guess. They're cousins, yeah. Yeah. yeah but, Megan was, but dolls go way back. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. From, uh, I mean, obviously like Chucky. Like Talking Tina from Twilight, Twilight Zone. Zone. I yep. always think of as like an older, right. like, yeah. Is magic it Talking with, Tina? Yeah. yeah magic. Magic, magic with Anthony I Hopkins. love Magic. That's such a good yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah. That's such a cool I'm afraid of puppets. Yeah, puppets are scary. scary. They really are. Especially Mm -hmm. when they're not being operated by someone, when they're just sitting there kind of dead. That freaks me out. Yeah, that's one of the scariest ones, like, same with like animatronics um, kind of freak me out too. I love theme parks a lot and I love animatronics and rides, but the idea of them just kind of sitting there dead after hours Gizmo. really weirds me out. I was going to buy the oh, Gizmo. God. Gizmo is an animatronic. Yeah. Right? yeah. And they made the big version too yes. for the close-ups. And the, 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 that the, sounds like a nightmare. It is. It looks like a nightmare <laughs> in the <laughs> pictures. It's not so cute Gizmo, without the sound yeah. and just wires dripping yeah. out of the back of them. And yeah. Like the pneumatic right. like yes. pistons and stuff going. <laughs> it smells like like hydraulic fluid. Just, oh. I didn't smell gizmo. But. Yeah. <laughs> for, for that second Gremlins, did you ever go to set since? No? You no. still just uh, were no. kind of sequestered for the sound? No. Group? And they didn't even ask me to do, there's a Gremlins animated show now. They didn't Yeah. Even, I don't know why oh, they didn't. I would yeah. have done it. They didn't ask me. I oh, the, the that's... one that's going to be coming out uh, yeah. real soon? Yeah, oh. I've seen ads and stuff. Yeah. I've seen little articles on it. Oh, shit. I don't know why they wouldn't come to me. Yeah. Well, I would have done gizmo it. Is gizmo in it? Yeah. Oh, oh he is. The guy, yeah. The guy Somebody else is doing that. Like. Oh, that's scary here. Oh, what do we get? Oh, God. <gasps> I see is it a, a puppet? puppet. No, it's not a, oh, well. <laughs> a puppet or a doll? Just doing nothing. Oh, my gosh. Just, just sit him here. Oh, no. Ooh. <laughs> uh, dude, yeah, that why face. are his eyes so blue? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't like that. I used to have matching glasses. I don't have those matching glasses. Oh, my glasses gosh. Today. <laughs> Where it. What's the origin story of this puppet? Where did he and come And should from? it be in a glass case where no one right, can touch yeah, it? Right, yeah, where no one can touch it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it just show up. That's scary. I used to carry this with me for a while. Rich will remember this. I used to carry it with me and just hold it and not say anything about it and oh just go God. sit in restaurants and order. <laughs> just completely ignore it. And another, and another soup. <laughs> just in a small bowl, please. <laughs> and never say anything. Oh, my God. I bet people would just do it and not ask because they just want to get the hell out of there. They don't ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love when they don't ask. Yeah. If you can confuse people, confusion is really close to horror. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just like people where they don't know what the reality is Mm -hmm. and you could take them into that dark, weird world and just not smiling and sitting with this in a weird place. And having them not recognize me for yeah. who I am and not knowing anything about comedy is really it's just uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's fun to see how they react. Like, are they going to laugh to, like, break the tension or are they going to just, like, address it? I um, well, I should mention, I was on American Airlines once flying to New York. Did he have his own seat? No, uh, but I held him. <laughs> and the person uh, next to me never said anything. That's 
<laughs> I mean, you know what? I, mean, I don't you? think I would yeah, either. Because then, like, if you say something, and they're weird, and then it be- and then it becomes a thing, then you're stuck there. Well, what I would do is I would hold him down and put his <laughs> arm on the oh god the armrest. Can you get little, a shot of that? His little upright palm. Yeah. yeah. Oh no. I yeah. Don't like so him. they would move their arm off. Mm-hmm. And I would like say he would take the arm. And I would say he'd take the armrest. Oh and I'd my go, gosh. Is that okay? <laughs> I'd go, yeah. Yeah, just don't talk to me anymore, yeah, please. please just stop. <laughs> and the flight attendant would come by and I'd go, Is there a, is there an extra dessert? <laughs> <laughs> Can we get some headphones for him? <laughs> oh, that's stupid. <laughs> That's why I'm not a comedian. I'm a podcast host. <laughs> oh, man. I can't stop staring at it. It's so smooth. <laughs> I really don't like it. Mm-hmm. I just want to break it. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't break it. <laughs> it's, just, it's uncomfortable. Is this where we should end the episode? We should end on like a slow zoom on the puppet. Does it have a name? It's Howie. Do you want to plug stuff or do you just want to plug the puppet? H- Howie, Howie Mandel does stuff. The podcast. It's a good one. Subscribe, listen, buy the merch at HowieMandel.com. There you go. Until next time. Yeah, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. And that's Howie. And, and Howie. <laughs> this has been the Deadbeat, Deadbeat Podcast. podcast. <laughs>